Welcome ladies and gentlemen to this, your Capricorn June 2023 reading and forecast. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James Clairvoyant and I've done a number of one-on-one -on -one Clairvoyant readings for Capricorns over the course of the last month from different parts of the world and if you might be interested, have a look at the information that's in the description. And I've also done healings for Capricorns as well. Now, I have to charge for readings. Healings are free. But uh, what I also have to tell you is, because depending on where this video ends up in the world, there could be laws that say that you need to seek professional medical attention at the same time. So obviously do that, which is a good idea anyway, don't you think? But now as the subscribers know, and it's so good to see the subscribers, honestly, I, I, I really enjoy seeing you each month. I love doing your readings for you. We only need to take five cards and we don't have any video advertisements breaking their way into this content, do we? Which is good. Now, I, uh, I'm going out on a lunch today. I have a, I have a play date with a, uh, with a lovely woman and, well, maybe it'll be a play up date. And uh, I uh, propose that we uh, spend a long lunch by the water uh, eating seafood, drinking champagne and wine. Well, I uh, enjoy the scenery, as it were. Ah, maybe I'll have to, uh, I'll just have to look after my virtue in that case. Now, what we're going to do is take five cards uh, because five is all we need. I don't think I need to worry about my virtue. My virtue was lost many, many years ago, so. The time for that is long past. Ah, five is all we need. They speak a lot to us, don't they? And we'll see what there is in store. So here's the five for you. This. Three of swords. Six of discs. Two of wands. Six of swords. And the six is there. Ten of cups. Why don't you come and sit down here next to me? We'll have a good close look at the paintings on these cards together while I do the reading for you. Now, let me just see. There has been some ongoing situation, I think, which has provided you some discomfort or unhappiness, but you get out of it and you build to material stability and success and great happiness. So let's unpack this, shall we, and see what further I can say to dig into that spiritual message that was coming through there. Let's have a look. The Three of Swords It's called Moving Towards Freedom. Well, I think that what we have here is, um, well, the, the the visual representation of the three, I guess, is a triangle, and it's seen here in the butterfly, isn't it? And the overall shape of the butterfly is triangular, and the butterfly itself is composed of well, several triangles within itself. Now, you know that the butterfly is a symbol of spirit evolving out of denser forms, a movement towards freedom. Now, the astrology of this card is your planet, Saturn, in Libra. Now, the, the good thing is that Saturn is exalted in Libra, and so Venus, that rules Libra, is treating Saturn, your planet, as an honoured guest. And so a lot of the damage that might often be associated with an energy of the Three of Swords for you is dampened right down here. And it's saying, though, to me that perhaps you do have some painful memories that are being held in the mind and heart and they need to be looked at. They need to be accepted. They need to be processed and they need to be let go so that you can heal. And this energy here is encouraging you to empty the sadness in your heart. Look, there's no doubt that the pain of losing something special is an individual experience that each of us has to go through and process differently, don't we? Uh, but the silver lining here is that this energy is cleansing your mind and your heart from the heaviness of life's pain. 
Now, it's important to see that Saturn is exalted in Libra because Libra is about adjusting things and Saturn is very much about bringing you onto your soul path, the reason why you are here. Now, sometimes we stray away because we get tempted by a whole heap of things and yet you are here to live and to learn certain things and Saturn brings you back in there. And it also brings truth and clarity to situations, relationships or issues that have been in denial. And it changes the focus off old emotional wounds and defeating thoughts. And it gets you to focus on the present. Things in the past are in the cemetery. Doesn't mean to say that what someone did or said or an event was good or should have happened or it was right that it happened but the point is that it has happened and now you let to leave it in the cemetery and move on but i'm the first to admit that cleansing is not an easy process but the rewards are many cleansing gives you a sense of lightness and strength and the cleanse here detoxes and rejuvenates your spirit so that a new identity and perspective can emerge. Now, very often we can be thinking about things in the past which have which have bring us some discomfort or pain, painful memories about things that we've just not accomplished or or whether we've failed at something. But the thing to bear in mind is this, that the acceptance of your failures is in reality the acceptance of your creator's perfection. Now, one of the biggest mistakes is to ignore what happens within you. There is no shame in letting your creator know that you are falling and that you need the creator to pick you up. The fall of the ego becomes the rise of your soul. Your soul wants to meet you. It wants to breathe. It wants to speak. It wants to see with the clarity of the eyes of your heart. These eyes of the heart are the eyes bestowed directly upon you by the Creator to witness him and his pleasure. And the friends of the divine are not in search of their own eyes, they are in search of his eyes. And do you know, sometimes it can be that we felt that we've disappointed people in, to do with our family or close friends, as well. Well, let me say this, that despite what you may believe, you can disappoint people and still be good enough. You can make mistakes and still be capable and talented. You can let people down and still be worthwhile and deserving of love. Everybody has disappointed someone they care about. Everybody messes up, lets people down or makes mistakes. Not because we are inadequate or fundamentally stupid, rather because we are imperfect and fundamentally human and expecting anything different is just setting yourself up for failure because nobody is perfect. Now, what is the card that's sitting beneath it? It's also a swords card. Structures for the journey. Well, I have no idea what that means, but let's have a go at it. Uh, let's see now. What we have here is, let's have a look at the painting and see what we have. Well, you more than anybody know that um, structure is necessary to support your deeper unfoldment. The elements of journey and structure, well, they're both present, I suppose, in this painting here, aren't they? The journey is represented by a figure that's following a winding path and structure by these little snowflakes that are there. And they all have a definite form. Whereas water is formless and represents the flow of life, snow and ice have a, have, have a structure, physical crystal structure to them, which lets you stand on them or make something with them. Now, the interesting thing about this astrology for me is that placed where it is here, it's Mercury in Aquarius. Now, Aquarius is also governed by Saturn. Now, I know that you'll hear people that tell you that Aquarius is governed by Uranus. 
Well, I don't believe that for a second. For thousands of years, Saturn ruled Aquarius, just as it did you. So there's a great complementary energy here. And it is saying this to me, uh, with Mercury, of course. Mercury is the planet of the intellect. It is a planet of communication. It is a planet of sorting things out and making things happen. And if you find that life does from time to time, maybe with respect to something that you've had here, become sort of overwhelming with, with stress, then this energy here is bringing a quiet, calm departure from that experience, giving you time to recover and to dream of new horizons. I think this also signals the beginning of a spiritual journey to healing. Ah, the key to this six is to walk away from unhealthy situations that are depleting your personal power and stealing your self-worth. Now, you're very ambitious and you like to please people, but it is important to know when to say no. Now, I think that the gift of this uh, energy here is a real universal divine support guiding you to a deeper understanding of yourself and your life and regaining spiritual strength and emotional strength and bringing a fresh start to you. I do see that you will be stepping away from difficult situations, cutting through illusions and fixed perspectives. You see, that's the benefit of Mercury that's here for you and moving into the truth and viewing life from a clearer perspective. Now, whatever difficulties you have experienced, whatever problem it brought to you, the conflict is now leaving. Now, you may feel depleted and even a little run down and depressed, but remember, those feelings come from outgrown perspectives and attitude that need to be shifted into a higher way of thinking. You are always protected, you see. The card here, this energy, brings you to a safe place where you can pick up your life piece by piece if necessary. I think this represents you getting stronger mentally, stronger emotionally, stronger physically and spiritually. Your life will be moving in a positive direction. Now the tides of life are always shifting between polarities of positive and negative energy. Well, your job, as you know, with Saturn with you, is to keep centered, balanced, while flowing with the rhythm of life. And sometimes we can get lost out there. Well, what this is doing is, it's bringing you back to your inner home now, what does that take us to? Let's have a look at it. And there is, what's here? What's this say? Healing sexual energy. Well, no doubt. Well, I think there's a lot more to this than that. So I can just feel it brimming up with me here. Now, this, see, wands is fire. And this is fire energy expressed through the second chakra, the sexual chakra, that is. And here, the basic life force takes sexual expression. Now, it's important to remember that sexual contact with a lover is just one way of expressing this energy. Now, if you don't understand this, you may repress your sexual energy when you don't have a partner, which would be wrong because cutting off your life force and, and sexual experience is an unnecessary loss. You have been given a sexual impulse because you are human and you are here to live life as a human. But I don't think I want to say anything more about that subject than that. Now here we have Mars in in Aries, well, which is great because Mars is the ruler of Aries. And so what we have here is a, a real sense of inspiration and pioneering spirit with you. You see, you overcome these things because you've used the mind, which has been brought to you by Mercury. And Mars now is bringing you the energy for action. This is the fiery energy of Mars, incidentally, that's here. It's that 
push forward, go ahead like a, like a train. Now the power of your creative energy at work, I think it could ignite imagination and visions for future things yet to be seen by the community. Now the challenge is to remain in balance, aligning the powerful flow of the divine energy with, with what can be turned into something tangible. This energy is going to burn away all blocks and distractions. It is shifting and transformative. And when you use this potent energy in a mindful and balanced way, you are empowered with confidence, personal power and courage. As your path unfolds before you, your mind is going to expand. Your heart will become full. Your actions will be passionate and you will trust your intuitive feelings. Your mind is expanding as your path unfolds. Now this too is bringing here to you great originality, creativity and, and ideas that are, are just useful. I do think it could indicate a successful partnership or a friendship with like-minded people. Do you know, your life force is now activated, bringing you confidence and courage to follow your vision. Now, as you would well know, planning and preparation are major components of success and they are a must, but you do have success and we'll talk about that in just a second. If you do the necessary research, your goals will be achieved. This signals a time to trust yourself. You have everything within you to achieve your dreams. The message here is learning how to use and understand the divine energy in the world of matter and achievement. Now I mentioned that card that was just pointing to it, which is talking of Success. What's this say? It says the web of life. Well, what that could mean is something to the effect that, you know, look, you know, sadly, I think most of us have lost our sense of the interconnectedness that we all have with one another. We've lost our sense of belonging, which comes with feeling ourselves as being part of something greater, whether a specific group or the larger web of life. Now, when we don't see how our actions affect other life forms or how our self-interest really includes the interests of the greater whole, well, we don't only suffer from feelings of isolation, but we become greedy and try to raid the collective warehouse. Now, the astrology of this is particularly good because it's the moon in Taurus. Well, Taurus is ruled by Venus, but the moon is exalted in Taurus. So Venus, as I say, receives the moon as a respected and honored guest. And the moon, of course, is the fastest of the planets, zaps around uh, the, uh, the zodiac uh, uh, very well, faster than anything else. and. It's about nurturing and looking after things in this context. And in the sign of Taurus, well, Taurus likes the finer things of life. It likes stability. It likes money. It likes good wine, good food, and good sex. Well, what happens here is that the moon comes in and nurtures Taurus's desire for those things and put them together and you end up with a success. Now, the moon, of course, is very transient in nature, isn't it? It, uh, it waxes, it wanes, it's full and it goes away. So your successes, which you are going to have, they're not going to be a continuum, but rather you'll have like this web, a fly will come into one there and there'll be a success another fly will come in, there'll be another success. A fly will come in, there'll be another success. So success is going to come to you like that during the period. But it is bringing this energy, material success and accomplishment. And you're going to have a feeling of prosperity. You have a feeling of abundance, but it also brings you inner wealth and spiritual wealth. Now this also awakens consciousness, I think, within you of the universal law of giving and receiving. So the key to this energy is to share your material and inner wealth 
without judgment or expectation of return. And the gift that this energy brings to you is fulfillment in your heart, your precious heart, and the cycle of abundance returning to you. I also think here that the, it, it's, being, it's saying here that there is the opportunity to achieve abundance emotionally, materially, physically, and spiritually by understanding and living that universal law of giving and receiving. See, what you give freely comes back to you tenfold. You understand that, don't you? Send out positive energy and goodwill to others, to nature and to Mother Earth, and in return, find yourself in the universal flow of joy, harmony, and well-being. Every day, miracles that come in all shapes and forms are bestowed on you now, bringing you exactly what you need. Now you exchange the energy of thoughts and intentions with the universe every day. So be aware of your motivations. Now by making conscious choices and acting from a place of unconditional love and giving, then that is what is going to dictate your future. This is saying to you that the lesson, what goes around comes around, really does help bring to you material success as well as peace and happiness. It opens your heart, if not your wallet anyway, if your intentions are opened to the qualities of compassion love and generosity, you will reap the cosmic rewards. Now that takes us finally, I think, does it take us finally? Yep, two. The Ten of Cups. What's the Ten of Cups got to say? Well, what's a picture I have to say to you? Well, there's a woman floating in the ocean and it looks like there's a dolphin nearby. Now she is at home in this watery environment of the emotional and spiritual realms. Now she's not afraid to get wet and feels free in that fluid nature of her emotional body. Her fluid nature is mirrored by the dolphin, which could represent a sort of a right brain intelligence, I suppose. The seashell-like image that's at the top there, I think that that represents unfoldment. And together, these aspects portray a feeling of comfort, contentment, and mastery in the watery worlds of emotion and intuition, as well as with the dynamic flow inherent in the suit of cups. Really, one of the best energies that can show up for a person, this one, because it's talking to you about you having a deep love and contentment radiating from within you out to the world. Your grail, if you like, is flowing over with peace and love, wealth on all levels, material, emotional, spiritual, and intellectual. As we've seen in this spread, has been achieved, but the inner wealth of deep spiritual understanding is what brings the most happiness. Now you are walking your soul path, I think. Now the key to this energy is self-love and finding your inner grail of fulfillment. This 10 brings gratitude for all the things in life. You feel as though you have returned to your true home. The gift of this energy is happiness and fulfillment. Because this energy has come in to shine on your life, good fortune and success have found you. It brings celebration of the goodness and love you have been blessed with. So enjoy yourself, live life passionately with wisdom and love in balance. This is a great time. This brings you strong emotional bonds here. Romantic relationships can deepen. 
You have learned, I think, how acts of love can heal and fulfill and how misguided love can deeply hurt, haven't you? Well, embrace and respect nature and the beautiful environment around you. Share your spiritual and material wealth with those less fortunate. You do feel extremely blessed with well-being, the perfect uh, work and a sense of prosperity. Now, living by your true values with spiritual integrity brings you a blessed life that is magical, full with love and joy and honor and hold each moment as a precious and sacred jewel. The moment is now and now is forever. Well, what a particularly good set of cards for you. Well done, you. I really enjoy doing your readings for you each month. Honestly, truly I do. It's, uh, I, I love, oh, look, that was a great reading, I thought, for you. I think there's some great things in store for you this month. And don't you deserve it? Really, you do. And now look, unless I see you privately during the course of the, of the, uh, of the month over the next few weeks, then I'll see you again next month. Now, until I see you, remember one thing and one thing only, and it is this, that you are a legend. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. Until then, it's bye for now.